Tuscaloosa River in northwest Georgia is home to a unique fishery. Landlocked stripers, originally stocked in Alabama's Lake Weiss, are naturally reproducing in the river. Right now, the stripers are making their annual spawning run. To find out about this unique fishing opportunity, GON went fishing last week with Glenn Brown of Rome. Glenn won a week of the Gone Fishing Contest last spring with a 38-pound blue catfish that he caught while striper fishing on the Coosa. Before we could fish for stripers, we had to catch bait, so we headed to Brushy Branch, where the Coosa River ends and Lake Weiss begins. It's called a tech triple load. You take a third of it, throw it over your shoulder, get a third, I get a little more than a third in my right hand and let a third hang, and just give it a simple swing in motion. You don't have to throw it all that hard. And it doesn't open perfect, but uh, it will catch bait if you're down there. That's a size I'm looking for. It's about a oh, four or five inch long gizzard shed. And why is it that you've got two different tanks, Glenn? I put them in the live well here to start with just to let them knock the slime and the scales off. I've got rock salt and water in there. It'll help harden the scales or they'll retain them. I leave them in there 10 minutes or so. Plus, I have to get a bluegill in, I sort them out, put them back in the water. Then I put them in my holding tank, which also has rock salt in it, but it's got pure oxygen running in through it. It's a oxygen edge system. With plenty of big gizzard shad in the bait tank, we trailered the boat again and headed up to Rome and to Heritage Park on the Coosa. The Coosa River forms in Floyd County, just above Heritage Park. The Etowah River, coming from Lake Alatoona to the east, joins the Ustanala River coming down from the north. These are Sam King Memorial ball fields. We're behind the levees in Rome. There's a public boat ramp there. Easy access. You can put a boat this size in, no problem. But we're in the city we're, limits. We're in the city limits of Rome. This is the headwaters of the Coosa. We're the, going uh, down the Ustanala and the Etowah come together right there above the ramp. Correct. And about 100 yards in front of us where we're going to start fishing. Horse Leg Creek runs in on the right. Horse Leg Creek? Horse Leg Creek. That's a Horse Leg Creek. And in the background you, where you can see the cars going by, that's Horse Leg Creek Road. And like I said, we're still in the city limits of Rome here. Just, gosh, downtown's just a short piece from here. I asked Glenn to describe his live bait rigs. This is a two and a half to a three ounce bank sinker that I'm using. I use a polymer knot to tie my hooks and my sinkers on. It's a simple knot to tie. You can tie it pretty quick, but it's a pretty strong knot. I think it's got 100% knot strength. What pound test is that you're fishing, Glenn? This is a 17 pound leader with a 20 pound main line. This is a three aught kale hook. Kind of vary from a two to a three to a four aught, but normally I fish with a three aught. There's a cartilage area out on the end of their nose, kind of a clear looking area. You can see their nostril. You can hook them through that area. Just go all the way through. It's a little tough, but you can cast them and they won't come off. And the stripers tend to hit a shad head first. Use a swivel just in case the bait gets to rolling over or the fish, catfish are horrendous to just roll and roll and roll as you're reeling them in. You double the line, stick it through the eye. Just simply make a, a simple knot, come back through the loop. Take the swivel, go through the loop. And it works better if you lubricate the line a little bit as you cinch it down. Again, Glenn uses a three-way swivel on 20-pound monofilament. One 17-pound leader is tied to a two and a half ounce bank sinker and the other to a three-aught kale hook. These are Ambassador 6500s we're fishing with. There's a couple of 6000s in here, but most of them are 6500s on a six and a half foot ugly stick. And for me, they're ideal for live bait fishing and catching these size stripers. says that's a striper and it's nine o'clock <laughs> yeah, he's bigger than I thought he was gonna be good one What's let's he see what he does what 
He is seven and a half pounds. Well, another good fish. They go straight for the back of the boat, don't they? Oh. <laughs> He's gonna show you he's not through quite yet, <laughs> or she. Got him. Might have another half a pound there. on it. That one's a little bit, I think about a half pound. I was going to say, it may actually like go eight. Yeah, eight pounds. Uh, I was telling him about the bait mm -hmm. fish I used, and he said, well, I'm not even going to talk about my fish. He said, the, fish, the bait you're using is bigger than the fish I'm used to catching. So I brought him fishing last year in this very spot. We hadn't been here 10 minutes. We came like 4 o'clock in the afternoon one weekday. Didn't have that long to fish. Got out here, the first fish we caught, I think, weighed nine pounds. He had a fit. His eyes were this big around. He was just like, I can't get look over at, that. Look at there. <laughs> oh. <Go. laughs> All right. Got him. Seven. Nope, this one's about six and a half. Yeah. Yep, okay. doesn't quite break seven. Good shot. Is that too close yep. up there no, to the bank? That's fine. Right. It'll, it'll tend to come off that sandy bank and drift out where it needs to be. And I think that might be right where he's at. Look at that. What it, Get him. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at there. Ever heavier, but he's about eight. Real similar fish. See? It is a nice. That one might go. It's almost eight and a half. Huh. Well, that's technically the best nine. one of the morning. <laughs> Number five. By midday, we had boated five stripers, but the bite was slowing down. We checked a few other holes that Glenn knows. All of the spots Glenn fishes have one feature in common. Some kind of structure from shoals to logs provides a current break for the stripers. One spot we tried was a submerged pipeline within sight of Floyd County Hospital. afternoon we motored up into the mouth of the Etowah River. We passed under the Broad Street Bridge, under the Southern Railway Trestle, and past the remnants of a Confederate era bridge. Here we anchored in midstream and tried a mix of cut and live shad. Right. Nope, he's gonna get in that line. Oh, he went under it. He's going back for it. <laughs> he doesn't know which way he's Look, going. Look, striker, good striker. Big. Is it a good one? No, he's not very big. I'm guessing four pounds, yeah. maybe. Nope. You want me to get around there and get that fish, or can you? Sure. There you go. Hey, look at that there fish. Sure didn't fight like an eight pound fish. This one's way on back there. Dang, this is <laughs> past the boat. First double. Got two on? Yeah. I saw the line go slack and it just never did tighten back up. 
Thought something funny was going on. Oh yeah, I see two eight or nine pound fish. Come here, baby. Seven on the nose. Double. That's the way we like it. Catfish. He wants it. Is this the 10 pounder we've been looking for? He was leaving away, isn't he? And I can't tell if I turn this drag up too much or not. Not a real big one, but a catfish, yeah, nonetheless. Four, five, five. Blue cat. There's your bait in the mouth. Hold up in the line now. <laughs> you got him. You can tell the difference between a blue and a channel. The channel will have kind of speckledy spots on it. See how even this fin is coming up. Right. A channel will be bowed. You'll, not you'll notice a considerable bow in it. By day's end, we had boated one five and a half pound blue cat and a total of 11 stripers up to eight and a half pounds. We had lost six stripers that got off the hook. If you would like to try Coosa striper fishing, you will find that access to the Coosa is excellent in Floyd County with public boat ramps at Brushy Branch, the Mayo Lock and Dam, and in the city of Rome. The limit is 15 stripers per day, only two of which can be 22 inches in length or greater. If you would like more information about Coosa River stripers and how to fish for them, call the Somerville Fisheries Office at 706-857-3394.